and some people complain like, like, about this, like, oh, man, you don't own the company. You don't own the company. Yeah, but here's the thing. You don't necessarily have to own the company. What you do is you take the money from the thing that you don't own and you invest into things that you do own. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's do you go. know what it's like to come from nothing at all? But every day you just want it need all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. Let me show you What's going on, y'all? This is Just No Ones. Back at the Run and Play Show, I help break down the top plays of success from leaders and entrepreneurs and top personalities by sharing gems from their personal playbook. And today, man, I want to discuss an industry that, you know, man, I, I really believe has a lot of pros and cons. You know, some people call it direct sales. Some people call it network marketing. Some people call it multi-level marketing. Some people have called it affiliate marketing. But I want to talk about it from really two perspectives, right? Because one, um, you know, I struggled for a very long time in that industry, right? And, and a lot of times I struggled because I wasn't good at it. Um, but on the second side of it, it actually changed my life. And so I want to talk about really both sides because I've been on both sides. And I've also seen people that have been on both sides and experienced sometimes the highs and sometimes the lows of the business model. But I really wanted to give, um, you know, really my personal thoughts on the industry and things that I think are great about it. Uh, but also some things that I think are not that great uh, about the industry. I think it's important to have a balanced view on, on really any business model. But let me just say this before I get started. Every business that I have, I can tell you the pros and cons of it. I can tell you the pros and cons of the podcasting business, right? There's there's pros and cons to it. I, the emer non-emergency transport company, there's pros and cons to it. The the events, uh, you know, entrepreneurship events business, there's pros and cons to it. The uh, uh, the clothing line business, there's pros and cons to it. And so this business is no different, right? And so I'm not nitpicking at the industry. Um, actually, I think the industry itself, the model is actually pretty solid, right? I, I think people sometimes mess it up. Um, but there are a lot of things that are great about it. So I, I want to start with the positive, right? You know, probably if you want to hear the negatives, uh, you probably want to fast forward to probably nowhere near the end of this video to, to jump into those. But for anybody that's looking for an unbiased view of the industry, let me tell you what happened for me first, right? So, so I got into uh, my best friend, Isaac. He called me about a company when I was in high school. Um, I'd never heard of the industry before. But these people were making, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month from home back at that time. That was a lot of money from home, and uh, I was like, "Cool, sign me up." I think the, the company was called Prepaid Legal, right? Um, it was like fifty bucks. They had a promotion for students. I signed up for it, and that really started me on this path that really changed my entire life. So shout out to my best friend Isaac for giving me a call because um, I would never find out about the industry at least up until that point had he not shown it to me. But let me tell you why I think it's an incredible business model. It is probably the most economical way to start in business, right? Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives you an incredible access to personal growth and self-development. There's a lot of people that, you know, especially a lot of entrepreneurs that I talk to today, that sometimes people talk about education when it comes to, you know, traditional education, meaning schooling, going to college. And while... Some people feel like, and I'm not saying I feel like this, but some people feel like, oh, I don't need school. Would they mess up when it comes to entrepreneurship is they feel like they don't need education. And listen, I didn't read a full book transparently until I got into network marketing. And it probably was, it probably was a, a year or two in where I really sat down and read a full book. Like I had read books. I read a book in school. Um, I think the only book I read before that in full was this book called Hatchet. All the other books I kind of skimmed through and um, read, but this is the first time, okay, I'm like how to win friends and influence people, reading that book, and then going and thinking grow rich, and then the science of getting rich, and then, you know, um, a whole bunch of John Maxwell leadership books, and then you start realizing how these books start shaping your thoughts, and then you start going to events, and you start understanding how to grow as a leader. Um, I love that, right? But but what I like about this model, because it was so economical, it gave you the ability to start really with nothing, and expand the business for really a fraction of the cost. Like, you know, like give me an example, like what, what, what my ambulance company, right? If we want to take on more customers, we have to go buy another truck, get more insurance, take on more risks, hire more employees, just to be able to take another maybe four or five, maybe six customers uh, or patients in a day, right? But guess what, in, in network marketing, 
if I want to grow my business and expand into North Carolina or expand into Asia or expand into Europe or go to Australia, go to California or Florida or any of these other places, South America, Latin America, right? I've simply just got to enroll a customer in that market and teach them how to grow and expand their business in that market. No additional overhead, no additional cost. I can literally just grow my business. And guess what? The money that comes in, that's my money. So I liked it. So uh, I had the ability to start with nothing, right? The, the costs were very low. I mean, on average, you're talking about maybe maybe maybe, maybe 20 bucks on the low end, right? Uh, up to maybe, you know, two $300 a month. But even the ones that are higher is still pretty low. You know, like my, my, my uh, the insurance on my ambulances are about $6,500 a month for the insurance, right? Some of you all are in trucking, y'all know what I'm talking about. My dad's, you know, he's, he's got a truck. I mean, he pays very, very high. My, my best friend, he drives trucks now. This, so, so when you look at this business model, it's very, very economical. But then I get access to all the business deductions and write-offs that a traditional business owner have. So it's like, man, I get the, I get the, I get the benefits of having a home-based business without taking on the risk that come with a traditional business. I don't have to go a half a million dollars into debt to open a restaurant or a million plus into debt to open a restaurant and be there every single day and all this kind of stuff to break even maybe in three to five years if my business lasts that long. I could come in and I could commit 12 to 18 months and I could learn the skills and I could learn what I need to do, right? I can learn the skills like, like prospecting, right? I think you need that in every business. How do I get people in front of what it is that I'm talking about? I gotta learn how to present, become a great communicator, right? How, how do I present the ideas in a way that attracts a person to me? I think that's a great skill for any business. How, how do I how do I get a chance to promote marketing? I mean, promoting is a great skill. Getting people in front of them. I mean, look, uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of businesses that they pay heavy for promotion. So learning how to do that, right? I mean, and there's so many other skills that you learn. Um, how, 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 to, how, to, how to talk about people well. How to leverage not really knowing but being an expert in what, what it is that you do. Something else that I think is invaluable is you, you're, you're always going to get a chance to be mentored by millionaires at a fraction of the cost. I mean, literally, the only thing you typically have to have is an active membership. And then you get a chance to be around. I, I think it's like a country club for entrepreneurs where you get a tr be, chance to be around, you know, like-minded individuals that are, that are excited about life, that are going after a goal. Man, that energy is contagious, right? Uh, man, the, the ability to have unlimited market growth. That's another, that's another pro. of So I'm going down to pros because I want y'all to understand, sometimes you start writing down all the things, right? All the pros of the business, you realize, man, this is actually a great business model. Like, I I, I know friends that, that do extremely well, but I'm like, man, you make great money, but you got to spend a lot in ads. Man, you make great money, but then you got to spend a lot in, in, in employees. Man, you, you got to make a lot of money, but man, you got to spend a lot in inventory. You got to spend a lot of money on all these things. And so by the time you take this 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 profit that you made, you cut it down, you take out ads, you take out employees, you take out inventory, you take out all this stuff. Well, man, now, now what are you left with? And when you look at the industry, it's like after at you, at you start having customers come in, and if it's and it has to be a legitimate product. I, I, don't, I, I think there are some companies out there that don't have great products. I think you've got to find a company that has great products, products that you believe in. I think if you find a company you don't believe in a product, you shouldn't do that company. But if you got a product that you believe in that you would use if it's if it's available to you, right, that you have access to, that you feel like makes sense to the customer, I think, man, that's a great, great business. The other thing that I look for uh, in a company is, you know, the leadership. I, I really believe, y'all know watching this show, everything rises and falls on leadership. Look up the leadership of the company. Is it somebody that has a track record that you can believe in? Is it people that you want to be around? Do they share values that you believe in, right? How are they with their families? How are they in their faith? How are they with their finances, right? Like, how are they with their, 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 their trust with people? I'm looking at that stuff, right? Timing. I mean, timing is really, really important as well. Because timing, you know, a lot of people are not going to tell you this in this business, but I'm going to tell it to you, is that there's some businesses you can be too early, and by the time it jumps off, you've missed it, right? And then there's some businesses that you can be too late and you miss the entire thing. But this is an industry where you can actually come in if you get something at the right time, man. You, it could be life changing. I know, I know some people right now that don't work ever again in their life because of the timing of when they got started, right? So, so, so we got the we got the mentorship, right? We talk about the unlimited market uh, there. The other thing is, and some people complain about this, like, oh man, you don't own the company, you don't own the company. Yeah, but here's the thing: 
you don't necessarily have to own the company. What you do is you take the money from the thing that you don't own and you invest into things that you do own. See, so you don't have to own the company to make to make six figures, to make seven figures, and then take that money and go buy some real estate that you do own. Right? To buy some assets that you do own. To invest some money in the investments that you do own. Does that make sense? And some people get so caught up in ownership. Let me tell you something right now. A guy that owns multiple businesses, ownership is overrated. Okay? That, that is, it is overrated, right? I'd rather be a part of a system, personally, I'd rather be a part of a system, but own other things. Because cash flow is very important. I believe, personally, this industry is probably one of the best cash flow producing businesses that you can have. Meaning that after expenses, you take home an incredible amount of income if you understand how to build it. And you can help other people do it too. There are a lot of businesses that people can actually teach people what it is that they do. You know why? Because then they would be competition. There's some people they can't teach. Like, I'll tell you this. By the time most people are t selling you the stuff out here in the marketplace, they, they believe a lot of the money and what they're doing is gone. Why? Because now they're teaching it to you. You know, Apple's not teaching you how to make an a, 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 a iPhone or iPad. They sell it to you. You know why? Because they're like, man, we got a great product. But, man, you when you have a business that, like, a person can teach you what it is they do, how they communicate, how they present. They can show you what it is, how it's working for them. And let me tell you why they can do it. Because not only is the mentorship involved, but it's a win-win. You do well, they do well. I think that's a great business model, mutualism, Right? It was like, hey, I'm helping you. Even if I don't like you, I help you because it only makes sense. And there's some businesses it doesn't make sense not to help you. It doesn't make sense to help you if I don't like you, right? So, so, so that that's another thing. Um, I, I like the fact that you can earn while you learn. You get a chance to earn money. You don't have to know that much. There's not a lot of businesses that allow you to do that. Um, we talked about uh, being able to communicate well, being able to communicate well, being able being able to build a team well. That's a great skill. I used to be one of those people that would say, man, I don't want to do this kind of business. I don't want to be a part of this kind of business. And it was because I wasn't good at people with people. I would say, I don't like people, man. I'm getting tired. I want something where I can make money where I don't have to depend on people. Well, I realized it was two. One, it was, it was, it was two things. One, I was hurt from people, right? Because I'm like, sometimes you can pour a lot of time, energy, and effort. Well, I'll talk about it in the cons, but sometimes you can pour time, energy, and effort into people, and it's not reciprocated, right? People have short-term memories. But then also, I wasn't really good at it. That's, I'm just keeping honest with you. I wasn't good at it. And because I wasn't good at it, I didn't like it. But then what happened is I started doing sales, doing door-to-door, -door, doing uh, 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 telesales, right? And then I was like, man, I want to be able to make some money when I'm not selling. And the only way to do that is to have a team. And so and so I, had, I, I learned to have a love-hate relationship with the skill set. And then I started to love it because I realized how powerful it was to be able to build a team, develop people, and help them change their life as well, all right? Um, the income opportunity is really unlimited. Um, you know, again, there are some businesses that it's not that the income is limited, but you're, you're capped by what you can make. Like you're only going to make so much in one McDonald's. I mean, you, the, the goal isn't for you to get rich or wealthy off of McDonald's. The goal is for you to have a couple and that creates the freedom. Well, man, you got the ability to do what, you know, McDonald's or any other franchise does and have that unlimited income potential without having the risk and the overhead, and you know, man, if I don't make it, my life is, I, I'm in debt up into my ears, right? Now, from a skill set standpoint, man, you learn to have some tough skin because people say a lot of crap. I mean, oh man, this thing is a scam. Oh man, this is one of those pyramid things and all this kind of stuff. Or, or they, people say, yes, I'm gonna do it, but then they don't. You know, people lie to you, they, they cheat. They, I mean, they, they just, they do all these things that can make you kind of lose a little faith in people. I'll be honest with you, right? But but it builds you. I always tell people, like, you know, um, the, the yeses, they build your bank account, but the noes build you. And so when you get in this business, you're going to get a lot of noes. You're going to experience a lot of rejection, but they build you as a person. I, I mean, there's some things I don't even pay attention anymore. And people ask me about it. I'm like, man, I, I, mean, I get it. But at the end of it, I'll say this, man. You know, in the midst of all that stuff, you learn to have a tough skin, and it builds you to be a better person. It builds you to be a better leader. Um... Uh, and then, man, when you, when, you, when you learn to grow your influence beyond just yourself, and then when you start to grow your influence to other countries, places that you never stepped your foot upon, man, it is a great skill to learn. But where do you learn it? You learn it from an industry like this. Uh, 
I mean, I was listening, I was looking at my, my podcast and also uh, my mixtapes, motivational mixtapes. If y'all haven't downloaded them, make sure you download the motivational mixtape. They're on Apple, right? You got the road to seven figures. You got the process remix. Um, man, there's one more that we, we, we got, but then we got a new one coming out. It's called Menteeship. Uh, where we talk about the, the, the art to becoming a mentee. So you can attract the mentor and then also how to become a great mentor. Right. But 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 that's the, those are all skills that you really start learning. But I looked at I'm looking at the, the states and then I start looking at countries. And I'm like, man, people are listening to it over here in Africa. People are listening to it in Australia. People are listening to it in Europe. And I'm like, man, we're, we're not there like that. But the message is still getting there. So you're able to, you know, grow, grow your influence. Right. Um, uh, you're able to develop patience. Uh, patience is a big you know, indicator to business. That's, it's a skill that pays very, very well. You know, just like promoting pays you very, very well. Those are two skills you got to have. So there's there's a lot of pros to the industry. And so I want to be very clear about that because I love the industry. Uh, but I also think at the same time, there's some things that need to be cleaned up. And I, I'm going to start because I feel like anytime you're addressing anything with leadership, you have to start at the top. And I think you have to start with the ownership. I believe there's going to be a shift in the industry. It's going to have to be. You know, the reason I believe that um, places like or companies like Instagram, companies like uh, uh, TikTok, companies like Pinterest, companies like Facebook or Meta, they've done extremely well is because they allow you to build a network, right? And then they allow you to do whatever you want to do with that network that makes sense to you. As long as it doesn't fall into a couple classes of things that they deem not uh, you know, proper for the masses. I, I feel like you know, affiliate marketing is getting it, right, where they allow you to leverage your network. I, I feel like network marketing needs to get it to where they allow you to leverage um, your network for a lot of great uh, things to happen in the industry long term. Because people are not just exposed to just one thing these days like they used to be 20, 30 years ago. People have options and people have more education, they have access to more. And so when, when I look myself today at businesses, I look at the ownership, right? Um, and my, my goal really is this. I'll, I'll tell you all this. My goal is not to necessarily find great companies. I, I believe I believe at this point, if a company is a great company, that's great for them. I believe it may not necessarily be a great opportunity. Like Amway is an incredible company. I'm not knocking Amway. By the way, if you watch Amway, watching this, you're in, in Amway. Congratulations you. Stay where you're at. Especially if you love it. But the odds of you coming in Amway and having the opportunity to make a million dollars a month today probably isn't there. Probably is not even there for $100,000 a month. Now, I'm not saying on the compensation plan, is it doable? I'm not saying that. But for you to build it with the masses of people, probably not going to happen in today's world. But it's a great company. So I believe there's a, there's a balance of finding something that's a great opportunity, but has the ability to become a great company. And that's why I look at the ownership. That's why I look at the leadership, because I want to say, okay, man, do they have a good products and services that make sense? Is the timing right? Does the compensation there, right? That's got to be there too, right? Does it pay me well enough? But does the leadership have the skill set, the ability to either become the leaders that can turn into a great company or attract the people that can make it a great company? And if you feel like the answer to that is yes, I mean, I think, I think that is, that's a great deal. Um, I think some of the pros that have come with the industry is there's a lot of people, there are a lot of bad people in every industry. And there are people that, that set up what I call money grabs. And it's the businesses that are not here for long term. These are, these are businesses that are here to hurt people. They set up businesses that are here short term and they know it's going to be a short term money grab. And, they, and they, they'll run it up and then they'll, they'll shut it down, take people's money and they'll move on. And I think that's bad. But guess what? That happens in crypto. That, that happens in real estate. That happens in tech. There are bad people in every industry, and so you've got to learn to look out for those those type of things. The other thing that I really don't like about um, the the industry from an ownership standpoint is how people change up. And, I, and like I said, I'll start with the ownership because you know here it is. You have people that you know, they, they, man, they edifying you on stage. They're talking about you, you know, publicly. But as soon as you leave, now they want to sue you. You know, not now. Now they wanna. Now they wanna make it to where it's hard. Like they, they'll try to take away your check and then sue you, knowing that you can't afford it because they just cut off the check that they wanted you to be committed to. And I feel like that's something that has to change. Now, if somebody's doing something, you know, like any other industry, if you're doing something that disrupts the business model, if you do something that's hurting the people, 
You know, just like in sports, if an athlete is just detrimental to the environment and they're, they're taking drugs and they're driving recklessly and they're having DUIs and they're doing, like, man, your contract is going to be canceled and that's fine. But if a person just says, hey, man, listen, I want to do something different and it's in a different realm and it's in a different space, but now you just want to sue me just because you don't want me to do that other thing. I think that's a flawed business model. Why? When I say a flawed business model, I think that's a flawed owner. Why? Because in any other world, if I help make you millions of dollars, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars, and in some cases, some people have helped companies make billions of dollars, and I decide I want to do something else, I believe the answer should be, hey, man, not only thank you for what you've done, but, man, hey, uh, maybe let me invest into what you're doing because I want, I want to pour back into what you're doing. Now, I'm not saying everybody should do that, but I'm, I'm saying that may not be a bad idea. You know, I, I was always taught, hey, man, send people away with love. You know, honor them when they leave. But I've also seen people do that, and then they talk to people. They do that publicly, but I've seen people talk people talk talk trash about people privately. I, I don't think that's right either, right? There are people that don't do business with me anymore. They're not in my team anymore, and we still communicate. Now, we may not as communicate as much as we used to because we're not dealing with each other in business the same way. But, man, we can still go to lunch together. Man, we can still grab a drink together. We can still get coffee together. We can still have our families come together. I still check on parents. I still check on friends. And that's how I feel like it should be if it's a real relationship. If you learn how to build real relationships in a great industry, I think you should be able to do that. But there are people that make it bad. Like, I'm really thinking about it. I told some of my friends, I'm thinking about putting together, I don't know if I would call it a union, but something that protects leaders and kind of evens the playing fields with owners because what happens is, you, you get started, and typically in business, you're a person that doesn't know that much about business because you're new. Like, I was 18 when I first got in business, so I didn't, you're reading agreements. You don't know what agreements are talking about. In fact, the agreements really don't apply to you until you start making 25, 50, 100,000 a month. Anyway, they're not paying attention to you. I mean, they, they matter to everybody, but, like, the real parts of the agreement are really for the leaders. And so I'm looking at the industry, and I'm like, okay. You have people that they really don't know that much about business and they're agreeing to this agreement that they don't even really know what they're signing until it's time for them they want to do something else. And that's when you really find out what's involved in that agreement. And any business agreement really should be a fair one, right? I believe there are things that should be put in any agreement that protects both parties. And some companies do it right. I'll be transparent with that. Some companies do it right. But most companies, they do it to where it's one-sided. And, and I get that. I think every business has to protect itself, has to protect its interests, and also has to protect the people that are part of the opportunity from anybody. Because, listen, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, Apple or any other company. They're also responsible for the people that are a part of their, their operation, right? But I do feel like there should be some type of representation for the big earners. That if you if you want to leave, there's some rules that owners have to follow. Like you just can't cut a check because they want to. And I, I don't know if I have the answer to it today. But you know, maybe some type of membership that the top earners can opt into. That hey, if you get sued by an owner, there, there's uh, you know, there, there's some protections for you. You know, we we have some representation for you. We have people that will review your your agreements when you when you get started with the company and so that you understand what is your agreeing to and if there's any adjustments that need to be made based on your business, right? Um, you know, I, I was looking at a company one time, and they're like, hey, yeah, we could do that, but we can't put that in writing. I said, well, if you can't put it in writing, I, 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 we can't do it. Oh, no, 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 we just, I mean, we got partners and stuff like that. We just can't put that down, but I, I'm agreeing to it. I said, well, if you agree to it, let's put it down in writing. And they couldn't, why? Because whatever you don't want to put in writing, that means it's not real. And so that's something else I don't like. I, I don't like when, you know, sometimes people get involved in, like I've had people unfollow me and other and unfollow other people that I know when they left the company, all because they decided they want to do something else. Now think about this. Imagine you having a job and somebody working for that company and deciding they they want to go work for another company, and then everybody from that company is like, oh my goodness, unfollow them. They wanted to get a better opportunity for themselves and their family. Even if you don't think it's a better opportunity to work with that company, they believe there was a better opportunity for themselves and their family. What does that have to do with you? You know what it has to do with you? Commissions. That's what it has to do with you in this industry. Oh, my goodness, people are going to follow them. Listen, I was always taught, like, you know, nobody can take what's yours from you. You know? you know, And, and you don't own people. You know? You go from, you know, sometimes these companies, they, they've never done a presentation for you at all. But all of a sudden, when it's time for you to go, your, your people are their people now. 
All right, the, the team, the Nate, the organization that you built, and obviously you've had assistance with that other other leaders. Now it's theirs. And I, again, I think it's a flawed business model. And I'm, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm also giving you the pros and cons. Right? Do I believe the pros outweigh the cons? Absolutely, because you can get to six figures a month, quarter million a month with all the pros, make enough money to do something that you don't have to do with any any deal with anybody. If you don't want to, you can become what we call people free. You don't have to deal with anybody if you don't want to. And, and I think that's a great place to be. But I want you to understand, you know, there, there are some people that you have to watch out for. And I, and I do think some some owners are worse than the others. I also believe that some are better than the others. Some, some of them I've seen do things exactly the way they should be. They honor people when they leave. They celebrate people when they leave. They, they don't cut their checks. They let people operate uh, in the right way. They don't talk crap about people privately, right? And that's not a lot of those, but there are some. And, and so, you know, um, I, I think the pros of the industry for what it teaches you, it, it's probably the perfect business. Make the money, invest the money. I think that's something else that's a con. There's not a lot of people that really teach you about money. Uh, I was fortunate to have mentors that like, hey, as you start making more money, they introduce you to financial advisors. They introduce you to different ways to diversify your income. Personally, I never diversified my income inside the industry until I was making over six figures a month. That was that was my number. I'm not telling you that's your number. Maybe, maybe it's 10000 Maybe it's 25000 a month for you. But there's some people, they try to diversify too early, and then they, then they mess up. There's people that raise their lifestyle too early. Because sometimes this industry can become like a competition. It's like, hey, man, you're making 50000 a month, but you're not driving a car like 50000 a month. You don't have jewelry like 50000 a month. You don't have a car. That's part of my run it back campaign. It's like, yo, I'm showing people you can do this stuff without all of that stuff. Because sometimes you need to hold off on raising your lifestyle for a little time. You know? Do you have 6 to 12 months of your expenses put aside cash? So if you do run across an emergency, you can last for a little while. But, but you know, a lot of people don't teach people how to diversify. And some of them have it, but they don't teach it. <coughs> and so, you know, my my analysis of network marketing, if I had to rate it, right, multi-level marketing, direct sales, although direct sales is a little bit different than network marketing, but a lot of people combine it. Affiliate marketing is a little bit different, but it's about the same. I would probably give it a 7.5 out of 10 that meets the check marks of all businesses. <coughs> I think that's what I would give it. Maybe an 8 because it's not it's not perfect. But, but I believe it can be a perfect business for a lot of people to get started in. Listen, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that I know right now that are doing extremely well and their starts were in network marketing. They began in network marketing. And a lot of things they're doing right now came from things they learned inside of network marketing. In fact, some of the friendships that they have came from this industry. And I think probably more than just the money, probably more than just the opportunity to grow is the relationship that, that you make that become lifelong relationships, that become lifelong friendships uh, in an absolutely incredible business. So, you know, I wanted to give my unbiased assessment of what I believe is an incredible industry, but also some of the cons. And man, I would like to know your thoughts. So people that have been in the industry, you know, maybe what are some what are some other pros that I missed? You know, what are some cons that I missed? What are some thoughts that you have on in the industry? I would love to have that conversation, maybe, maybe in the comments. Uh because we're gonna we're gonna have another episode talking about this industry because I mean there's so many things that come up in it. Um uh, but yeah we'd love to hear your thoughts on oh, you know my personal experience. That's all I can share. Uh, but I will say this again. I think it's an absolutely incredible, life-changing industry that pretty much everybody should be a part of, get a chance to experience because of all the pros, uh, but also be aware of the cons so you know exactly what you're getting into. So, man, this is Justin Owens, back at the Run and Play show. We just gave you another play, breaking down the industry of network marketing, direct sales, multi-level marketing, affiliate marketing. Y'all go run it. We'll see you on the next episode. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run to Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run to play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like?
Wanting it all, do you know it is? Love?